Hey guys, I'm Marissa and welcome to my channel. My husband and I are expecting our first baby due May of 2020 and we are super excited. It's definitely been a long road for us to get to this point and one of the things that we are really trying to plan for is our finances when it comes to preparing to have this baby. I am obsessed with budgeting. My husband and I paid off $87,000 of student loan debt in about two and a half years, all thanks to a lot of sacrifice and some budgeting. And so I am already thinking about how we are going to budget for this baby. So I wanted to share a little bit about our budgeting plan of how we are going to financially prepare for this baby in May. The first thing that we are doing is saving an emergency fund. So my husband and I just moved into our house and we are first time homeowners, which is very exciting. We are so grateful to be here in this home and we actually moved while I was like six weeks pregnant. So that was fun. But now that we are in our house, we know that we want to beef up our emergency fund. So we initially had $10,000 in an emergency fund while we were renters. And since it was just the two of us and we were renters, it didn't really seem like that big of a deal. And that was about five months of expenses for us. And we've decided that we want to bump that up to be more than six months, or, you know, just a little bit more than six months of expenses now that we are in our house and our mortgage payment is more than our previous rent and we have additional costs associated with that and since we are now going to have a family we really want to increase our emergency fund to make sure that we have that really great cushion so our goal right now is to have $25,000 in an emergency fund sitting there in savings that we don't touch and don't worry about and so we currently have about like 13 14,000 in that fund right now so my plan is hopefully by like February or March we're going to have that completely done we'll have our $25,000 sitting in that emergency fund and so by the time that we have our baby like we aren't going to have to worry about that at all and that'll all be taken care of the next thing that we're doing is starting a baby fund and sinking funds are something that is talked about a lot in the personal finance community which basically just means saving for something that you are expecting you're going to have to spend money on and you can save for it little by little every month and so this is what we plan to do to cover some baby related expenses now I'll get into medical so actually our baby fund isn't really going to be for medical expenses but we are planning on saving for baby necessities for things like furnishing the nursery and other baby Baby supplies even covering things like maybe a little bit of maternity leave for myself and maybe a little extra buffer if we do need some for some medical expenses that being said we are really more focused on trying to beef up that emergency fund right now and then we plan to save for our baby fund so basically between now and May we're just trying to save as much money as possible whether that's to the emergency fund or the baby fund all in all it's money in our bank and we just want to make sure that we have all of that money there but we're just going to be earmarking it a little bit differently so the emergency fund is first priority for us right now and then will come the baby fund so making that necessity for the emergency fund before all the fun sorts of things of like getting the fancy you know crib and things like that in the baby fund okay to talk about medical because this is a big one and this is something that i'm actually very fortunate for and really thankful I am actually 25 years old and I will turn 26 in July, which means that I'm going to be 25 for my entire pregnancy. It is like currently fine for you to still be on your parents' insurance plan up until you're 26 years old, even if you're married. And so I am fortunate to be one of those people and I am a dependent on my mom's medical plan. And I could definitely get my own plan through my own employer, but with the way that my mom's medical plan works at her work, she pays the same price for a family rate and I have two younger sisters and so they need to be covering my sister's medical while they're in college so it's no additional charge for me to be on the plan as well so it's been easy that way I just have my insurance through them and I actually don't pay my mom anything for it maybe I should but my parents have just taken care of that cost of paying the premium with their family medical plan since they're already paying it for my sisters so that being said I have done a lot of research with my insurance company and this is something that I would definitely recommend doing if you are pregnant do as ask as many questions as you can with your insurance provider to know what is covered and what is not and so very early on in these stages of being pregnant I've called my insurance company maybe like three or four times so that I have full understanding of my coverage I actually have double coverage right now with my mom and my dad but my dad's is going to be ending soon 
And the interesting thing is with my dad's policy, I actually called them up and they do not provide prenatal care for dependents on the medical plan and I am a dependent on his medical plan. So that's actually not going to be used to me anyway, so that's going to be ending. But with my mom's medical plan, I've called them and I've triple checked, made sure, and dependent prenatal care is covered under that insurance plan. So all of my expenses are going to be okay with my mom's current insurance. So that was an interesting thing that I was not aware of that not all prenatal care is covered if you're a dependent yourself. But I do, I do know that as soon as baby is born, it's going to have to have its own you know, insurance policy, which my husband does have insurance, so we'll just add baby to his insurance when that time comes in May. All that to be said, the insurance that I have with my mom is honestly like fantastic. My deductible is $500 and my max out of pocket is $3,500. So basically I'm looking at the most that I will have to pay next year for 2020 will be $3,500. And even this year, I've had one prenatal visit so far, and I have two more scheduled, one in November and one in December. And so I'm not even going to come to meeting my deductible. I called my insurance to make sure that I fully understand everything, and they told me that my first visit is a copay of $25, and then all of my other prenatal visits, which I feel like I have like 20 scheduled between now and my due date, are all completely 100% covered. So really the only thing that I'm going to have to pay for is that hospital stay for labor and delivery. Um, Lord willing that that's the only, you know, medical thing that I'm going to have to do if all goes according to plan. So I am planning on doing the blood test, the genetic testing to find out the gender and other to test for other genetic abnormalities. And so I'm actually not 100% sure what that costs. That is such the confusing thing with insurance and medical. I've been on the phone with like the lab for billing as well as my insurance company to find out what's covered and what's not and how much it's going to cost. I honestly still don't know, but I've heard that it is, my office has told me that a lot of times it's 100% covered. Sometimes it wouldn't be more than like $200 out of pocket. So we'll see and I'll definitely keep you guys posted as to how much this does cost us if it does. Um, but that is the only other thing that I'm planning on spending for this calendar year. The other thing that my husband has is my husband is on a high deductible insurance plan with his employer because he's like, you know, a 28 year old dude and he goes to the doctor like once a year for his regular checkup. And so he doesn't like ever have to go to the doctor or spend money on medical. So the high deductible plan has been really beneficial for him. And with the high deductible plan, you can do an HSA, a health savings account. And the awesome thing about an HSA is that you get to put money into it tax-free and you get to take it out tax-free. So it's a great tax advantage account and you can use it only for medical expenses. But looking into it more, you can actually use it for anyone in your household for their medical expenses. And since even though I'm not on Jacob's insurance plan, I can actually still use it for my expenses. I'm not sure if that's for all HSA accounts, but that's at least for his that he has with his employer. So that is fantastic news for us. Jacob and I, we've been putting over like $600 a month since July into this HSA because we've anticipated that we were, are going to have a baby and we are going to have these expenses. Once we do have a baby though, for it's actually open enrollment season, Jacob's going to change over to the regular medical plan, not the high deductible, because I don't want to have a kid on the high deductible plan, especially like during this like really early time. That can be really costly. I don't know. That's just what we're deciding to do for at least this next calendar year for 2020. So when he changes plans, we won't have the HSA. That being said, we're really trying to fill the HSA so that we have those medical expenses covered. So right now we have over $3,000 in that HSA account and we'll have more than $3,500 by um, the time that we switch plans. And so basically all my medical expenses for this baby are covered, or at least for myself, and then whatever else is for the baby, we'll have like the HSA and then maybe we'll need to dip into that baby fund if needed. But that is a huge like reassurance for us that all of the medical is already taken care of. I know I'm not gonna have to spend more than $3,500 I'm not even sure if everything goes like normal delivery according to plan. I'm not even sure that I'd even have to pay $3,500, um, but we'll see. But it's just nice to know that that's like worst case scenario and we already have money sitting in an HSA. I know that that was kind of a lot of information about medical, but that is like the biggest 
expense I feel like for most people when it comes to having a baby so it's really important stuff to know and I've definitely been asking a lot of questions to my insurance company to make sure I know what is covered and what's not I also learned that they cover a breast pump so that's what I will be using to get my breast pump before the baby's here the other thing that I'm trying to remind myself as we are financially preparing for a baby is what is a need versus a want when it comes to baby items so like I said our baby fund is basically for supplies baby supplies and I know that we are going to be having a baby shower and I'm sure we'll receive some gifts from people um, but there are going to be other things that we're going to have to cover ourselves I'm um, sure lots of diapers and all those fun things but really distinguishing like do we want to spend money on these certain things or is it something we can go without or like what is really important to us that we're willing to spend money on and that means maybe not spending as much money on other things and honestly for me I really want like a nice stroller I don't know why I'm like so obsessed with this but like I've seen like the Uppa Baby Vista stroller and it's just like so sleek and so nice and then converts into a double stroller later. So I feel like that's one of those items that's like buy nice and it's going to last you for a really long time through like multiple kids. And so I'm kind of really tempted to get that stroller. It's not cheap. It's over like a thousand dollars, which is insane, but I just really like it. So I don't know. I think that's going to be one of those things of like when we have our baby fund and we see how much is in it, like determining if that is something that we are willing to spend that much money on. Um, so I think that that's just something that we're going to have to keep, like I said, in the back of our heads um, and figuring out what we truly do need. The other thing that I know we are going to be spending money on during this pregnancy is maternity clothes for myself. And so with that, I plan to put maybe like $50 a month and let me know if it should be more or less <laughs> if you are pregnant and your experience with that. But I'll probably put like $50 a month into a maternity clothes fund um, I haven't had to buy any maternity clothes right now. I'm currently, um, at the time of filming this, I'm like 10 weeks pregnant, so I still can wear all my normal clothes, but I am planning on getting like maternity jeans and maternity leggings and a few other things. A lot of my shirts that I wear are all pretty flowy, so I think I can use those for a lot of things, but with my pregnancy being like basically the entire rainy season in Oregon, I'm definitely going to have to get a rain jacket for maternity, which will be interesting. So there are some of those staple items that I know are gonna be a little more spendy that I'm going to have to get. But besides that, seeing what honestly I can just like use from friends who've had babies and just like reusing their maternity clothes because I'm only gonna be using it for a few months. But I do know that that is an expected expense. Another expected expense is the increase in food costs. So during this month of October, this has been like the start of my pregnancy, like first trimester, and I haven't been feeling super great. And that to be said, when we go to the store, there's some items that I'm like, yes, that sounds good, I'll totally eat that. And then also like, we'll come home and I'll be like, oh my gosh, I really like want to go out for this food item. And so our grocery and eating out budget have just been a little bit higher right now because I'm just trying to eat whatever like sounds good, whatever I can like stomach to eat. So that being said, yeah, we've been spending a little bit more on groceries and eating out, which is something that I know that I'm going to have to adjust in our budget um, for at least this rest of this first trimester and maybe going forward as I begin to probably eat a little bit more, hopefully not that much more. But this that is something that I've already noticed this month of October and need to plan for for coming months. We are so excited to begin budgeting and planning for this baby due in May. I just still can't believe that we are pregnant. If you're wanting to check out more videos related to budgeting and a baby, check out this video here. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more baby and budgeting related videos because that's what I love to talk about these days. And I will see you guys in that next video. Bye.